So I always like to keep the big dogs on the ground. Uh, I think it's less scary. If you get them up on a table, it's metal, it's scary. They're not used to being up there, but any small dog or cat, absolutely the table. Otherwise, we need to kind of get them on the ground. If you have a veterinary patient who doesn't have any vomiting or diarrhea, give them a cookie. It's gonna teach them that the veterinary clinic isn't so scary and anything we can do to reduce their fear, I'm a big fan of. So for me, I always just like to say hi to the dog. I'm gonna kind of come to the side, introduce myself. Um, obviously, this is my own dog so that he knows me. But I always kind of like to come down a little bit, be less scary. And I'm gonna start and just check out their mental status by seeing how awake and alert they are. They should be able to focus on you. They should have two equal sized pupils. You should be able to see white sclera. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give them a little head scratch. I'm gonna look in their ear. If you have a big floppy dog, definitely grab an otoscope. Look down the ear canal for any signs of infection. Then check those submandibular lymph nodes, right? They should be equal on both sides. They lift sort of on the base of the jaw right around here. Then I'm gonna come down, feel the neck, absolutely. I'm gonna come down to the prescapular lymph nodes. I'm gonna feel for those, making sure that they're of equal size. I always kind of go down both legs, making sure everything's okay, no lumps and bumps or anything like that. Thank you very much, Havoc, I appreciate that. I like to try to um, be as friendly as we can with these pet patients, obviously. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna ask him see if he'll stand up for me, perfect. I'm gonna go down his back, kind of make sure he doesn't have any obvious back pain, nothing going on there. I then feel both sides of the chest cavity for lumps and bumps, that sort of thing. I'm then gonna go ahead and palpate the abdomen. Some dogs aren't huge fans of this, so go ahead and palpate cranial and caudal, ideally. At this point, what I generally do is listen to the chest because I always start at the front and I'll work towards the back. It's sort of just my thing and, and I recommend you kind of do something similar. Uh, I, I never like starting at the back. I think that's rude, so I always like to start at the front. And again, remembering that if your animal's looking a little fearful, Offering a cookie is never a bad idea as long as they are allowed to have food. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and listen. And I'm going to listen to both sides of the chest. I'm going to listen to the cranial and caudal lung fields on both sides. Remembering that the heart's a little bit easier to hear on the left side behind the elbow. So that's generally where I start. And then I'm going to palpate pulses at the same time. Making sure that the pulse rate and the heart rate are the same. He has a nice slow heart rate because he does dog agility. Then we're going to listen to all of the lung fields, cranial and caudal. We're going to come over to the right side, do the same thing. Now generally I would spend a little bit more time doing the auscultation of the lungs and the heart uh, because that's what's best for the veterinary patient. I see a lot of times this portion, the listening portion of it, really getting rushed through. And to be perfectly honest, it's a way better if we take a good 30 seconds or even a minute to listen to everything, um, you know, each, each area, at least uh, 30 seconds to a minute. If we just rush through and we only listen for five seconds, that's really hard to hear a heart murmur. It's really hard to hear any crackles in the lungs. So we really want to sculpt this veterinary patient. And the longer you spend time doing that, the, the easier it's going to get when you actually do hear a heart murmur or a crackle because you will have known what was normal. So from there, I then go ahead and I'm going to check the back end, right? So we're going to peek back here. <laughs> Never a fan of that, right? So sometimes having someone else to help you is always very good. So we're going to just peek back make sure that we don't see any obvious anal sac um, tumors or any anal, anal masses or any inflamed anal sac area. I'm gonna go down both hind legs, feeling for lumps and bumps. And then we're gonna get to the popliteal lymph nodes. So these popliteal lymph nodes live on the back, kind of right behind the, the knee area. So we're gonna feel for both of those, making sure that they're equal. We're gonna make sure that he's got no lumps and bumps and all those things. I always like to pick up toes, make sure that they can plant them and flip them. He doesn't have any back issues. And if I haven't already done so, I'm gonna feel the bottom half of the back. So that's how you do a physical exam. Make sure you are consistent every single time uh, so that you don't miss something. And, and the more that you get to do them, the more familiar you're gonna be with, with, with what is normal versus abnormal. And don't forget, if your veterinary patient will tolerate it, give them a cookie. All right.
Thank you so much. Hope this helps you uh, with your physical exam.